your left shoulder, Mike. Get that shoulder up higher. Keep your left out. Further. That's it. Keep him away from that left. Keep jabbing, Mike. Keep that left hand in his kisser. Get him off balance with it. Now, now the right. Okay, Mike. That's enough for today. Come on over here. I want to talk to you. Let me have that glove. I'll take it off for you. Yep. That's it. There we are. Oh, it feels good to get that mouthpiece out of my jaw and these gloves off, Sam. Oh, how'd I look in there today? Yeah, you'll do. Throw this rope over your shoulders, eh? I want you catching cold right now. There you are. Now let's have that helmet you're wearing. Yeah. I'll put it away with the rest of the stuff. Good enough, Sam. Well, what goes on now? Nothing. You take a shower and you go home, take it easy. No more workouts till the big fight tomorrow, and then nobody will be calling you Mike anymore. They'll be calling you Champ. Think so? <laughs> sure. What's the matter? Don't you like the idea? Are you kidding? <laughs> Mike Daggett, heavyweight champion of the world. You come a long way, kid, and I'm the guy who brought you up there. Yeah, I know, Sam. Thanks a lot. Oh, forget it. Oh, look, uh, I gotta stop and see my girl on the way home. That's okay, isn't it? Well, uh, it ain't okay, Mike. Huh? I, no, I got nothing against Billy Stanley. She's a good kid. She's for you all the way. Only fighters and females don't make so good. At least not before a big fight. Look, uh, call her up. Well, what you say goes, Sam. Say, look, you, you really think I got a chance against the champ? This, this isn't any pep talk you don't give Oh, me. you're a cinch, Mike. Only thing that can stop you tomorrow is the referee counting ten over that cheese champ. He's a pushover, Mike, a pushover. You really think that, don't you, Sam? Think it, I know it. By tomorrow night, you'll be champion of the world. Think of that, kid. Just think of it. I've been thinking of it, Sam. And right now, it's... The one thing in the world I'm afraid of. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Silk. Sam Billings. <laughs> Come in and sit down, Sam. I want to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I sent for you so I could make you a present of some easy cabbage. <laughs> sit down, kid, sit down. I, I come over because it was near the gym and I just got finished watching Mike Daggett work out. Uh-huh. Not because you sent for me, so. Well, you won't be sorry. Sam, I've been managing the champ for eight years now. I yeah, know. We got a couple of more years of easy dough ahead of us if, uh, if your boy don't cop the Duke tomorrow night. <laughs> I ain't doubting that, Silk. Only my boy's a breeze to win. I know it. He knows it, and you know it, or you wouldn't be sending for me. Maybe, maybe, uh, but, uh, Sam, look, we, uh, we ain't in this business for love, are we, huh? No. No, none of us are. Now, uh, suppose I fix it so you and your boy make more dough by losing. <laughs> you, uh, interested? You want Mike to lay down? That's right. <laughs> On a golden pillow with an awful lot of cash for a blanket. <laughs> uh. Hey, where you going? Out. No dice on your deal, Silk. Mike fights clean. He fights honest. That's it. Not yet, it ain't. You stand between me and a fortune, Sam. If I am, ain't moving out of the way. Oh? No? Okay. <laughs> Want to play rough, huh? Well, I'll toss you out of here right in your ear, Hey, Sam. Hey, that me. You. Oh, sure, but this is just a sample of what you get if you let your lip get loose. Ow! Ow! Ooh. Chum. <sighs> See, I wouldn't say anything about our conversation if I were you, Sam. Because <laughs> I wouldn't throw a fight, you throw me out of your office. That's right. Only that ain't all I'm going to do. Your boy's going to lay down tomorrow night, Sam. <laughs> One way or another. Oh, look, Billy, I shouldn't even be here. Sam told me to call you up, made me promise I'd go right home so I'd be in shape to fight tomorrow oh, night. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I don't mean to quarrel, only I can't help it. Why can't you see things my way? I can, baby. And maybe you aren't wrong, Billy, but give me a break. Look at what I put into this fighting business. Years of boxing at small clubs for peanuts, weeks of training, all to get a shot at the title. Well, look what you'll take out of fighting, Mike. Cauliflower ears, your, your nose all twisted, maybe your brain, too, if you take one punch too many. Uh -oh. It's all got to happen if you win tomorrow night. Hey, now, look. Nobody's been talking to you and trying to get you to make me quit tomorrow, have they? Oh, Mike. No, 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 baby. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. 
It's just that I'm all tight inside. I know how you feel. I know you haven't had any picnic while I was scrapping in those penny ante clubs. But don't pack me in now. Not, not when I'm going to grab the brass ring. You take the brass ring, Mike, and it's the only ring there'll ever be for you and me. But I need the dough the title's going to give me. I need it so we can get married, Billy Baby. That's what I've been planning on. Well, it's no goal, Mike. I don't want that, any part of it. I'll go on making my own living. Sure. Sure, taking pictures of suckers in a nightclub. It's some job for my girl. I'm going to keep that job, especially now that it looks like I'm going to lose you. I'm not going anywhere, baby. Yes, you are, right out of my life. I won't have the guy I love walking around on his heels. <sighs> There's got to be some way out of this, Billy. There's got to be. All right. There is a way out. Mm. You've got to fight tomorrow night, but you don't have to win. You did promise me you'd quit if you didn't win the title, didn't you, Mike? Yeah, yeah, I promised. Then don't win. It's so simple. We'll have enough money from your end of the purse to get married and start off with. It'll last till you get a job. What about it? I don't know, Billy. Maybe I'd do it if it wasn't for Sam, but... Well, he's had just as tough a time as we had. I owe him a clean fight. I don't like to hurt Sam either. But this is for us, Mike. For you and me. Okay. Okay, Billy, baby, you win. I'll take one tomorrow. Mike, oh. I'm glad you're here. I tried to get you at your place, but you weren't there. Sam, we got something to tell you. First, I've got something to tell Mike. Now, listen, kid. Yeah. I just came from Silk Morgan's office. Threw me out. This leg of mine still hurts from where I landed on it. He threw you out? Why, I... uh, 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 that don't do nothing to Silk. I just got sore because I told him you wouldn't lay down for the champ tomorrow night. I got it all fixed for him to win. They're betting their shirts on him. When I wouldn't go along, Silk tossed me out the door. Oh, he did, did he? Well, I'll get him for uh, that. Not him, Mike. Get the champ. That'll fix the whole crowd. Leave him to me, Mike. Leave him to me. Tomorrow night, I knock the champ right into Silk Morgan's lap. Mike! <laughs> Excuse me a moment, Sergeant Heath. Oh, sure. District Attorney Markham speaking. Hello, Mr. Markham. Never mind who this is, but you've got to listen to me. All right, if I must, what is it? There's a big fight on tonight. Mike Daggett against K. O'Connolly, the champ. Yes, I know. Well, uh, Mr. Markham, I've been up all night trying to figure out what to do. I just decided the best thing was to call your office. Well, having decided that and having done that, suppose you tell me what this is all about. There's a mob in back of the champ, Mr. Markham, a tough mob, and they're trying to see that Mike Daggett doesn't win the title tonight. They'll do anything to see that Connolly keeps it. You've got to protect Mike. You've got to. Promise me you will. Well, I'll promise you will try. Oh, thanks, Mr. Markham. I'll never forget this. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Heath, uh... Uh, I could hear that, D.A. <laughs> You're not going to let that call bother you, are you? That business of knocking off the challenger has been in a hundred movies and in a thousand stories, but it just doesn't happen. Not in real life, it doesn't. It hasn't yet, you mean. I promised the young lady that this Mike Daggett would have police protection, Heath. See that he gets it. Sure, D.A., but the club will be loaded with cops tonight anyhow. We always have them on hand at a fight. Now, don't worry about anything. We'll handle anything that happens to you. Who are you calling? Philo Vance. Why? Because some crackpot dame thinks the challenger is going to get knocked off tonight? Hardly. I merely want to invite him to the fight, that's all. Oh. Hello, Officer Philo Vance, private investigator, Miss Woods speaking. Oh, Miss Woods, this is District Attorney Markham. Is Miss Deering still away? Yes, she is. Her mother's still sick. So Mr. Vance keeps me on as his contemporary secretary. <laughs> you probably mean temporary, but we won't bother about that now. Is Vance there? Is he here? He's practically on pins and needles waiting to talk to you. Just a minute. It's for you, Mr. Vance, here. Thank you. Hello, Markham. I was hoping you'd call. Well, thank you, Vance. That's very complimentary. <laughs> but if you wanted to speak to me, why didn't you call me? Well, I might have, except that I have no murder to invite you to. <laughs> well, this time, Vance, I don't have any either. <laughs> I just called to see if you'd like to be my guest at the big fight tonight. It so happens that I have two extra tickets, and it promises to be a great match. Well, thank you very much, Markham. I'd like very much to go. You'll still have an extra ticket, but we'll dig up somebody. Thanks again, and I'll call you back and arrange a meeting place. Oh, uh, incidentally, Vance, I'm not promising anything, but there just might be a little unscheduled excitement at the fight. Really, Markham? Well, that sounds wonderful. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, Mr. Vance, I don't want to sound like I'm forward or anything like that, but did I understand Mr. Markham had an extra ticket? Why, yes, he has, Miss Woods. Well, gee, if it wouldn't be putting anybody out, 
I'd sure love to see that fight, Mr. Vance. You like fights, Miss Woods? In the neighborhood where I live, if you say you don't like fights, right away you're in one. <laughs> oh, really? I never have guessed you like boxing matches, Miss Woods. Well, I, I never boxed any. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Vance, should we continue on with that history of the last thing we were working on? The president murder case? I think we'd better, Miss Woods. What disturbs me is that that was last week. We haven't had a single killing this week to work on. Oh, there's going to be one tonight, Mr. Vance. I could tell you that without the slightest thought that I was a prefabricator. <laughs> I don't question your telling the truth, even though I think you mean prevaricator, Miss Woods. But you're sure there will be a killing tonight? Natch, at the fight. When Mike Daggett gets the champ in the ring tonight, he'll murder the bum. And now it is my pleasure to present that star of stage, screen, and radio, your friend and mine sitting third row ringside, that popular comedian... Eddie Harris! Yeah, 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 yeah. He's cute, isn't he, Mr. Vance? I can't tell. His face is in the way. Time for the big match, isn't it, Markham? Just about, Vance. <laughs> They've introduced everybody from the promoter to the janitor. <laughs> yep, there they go, clearing the ring. Well, and now for the heavyweight championship of the world, 15 rounds to a decision, our feature attraction at 189 and a half. Wearing purple trunks, the young slugging sensation from this city, the challenger, Mike Daggett! Over here, at 210 pounds, wearing black trunks, holder of many records and recognized by one and all for his courage and his fistic ability, the heavyweight champion of the world, K.O. Connolly! K.O. Connolly! This is it, Vance. And so far, no trouble. How could there be trouble? The fight hasn't started yet. Mr. Markham means that there has been no evidence of the veiled hint of extracurricular activity he made to me on the phone. Oh. Everybody, the title match is about to begin. May the contender and the champion put forth their best efforts. May the superior skill and stamina of one or the other be the difference between victory and defeat. Now come out, fighting men. There they go. Oh, wow, look at that right. The champ let loose. Miss Woods, please. What's the matter, Mr. Vance? Don't you like fight? <laughs> Vance Daggett was hardly touched, and he's down. Three, he's getting up. Four. Probably just knocked off balance, that's all. The champ will get him now. There he goes, measuring him. Here he comes. <gasps> he missed it. He missed him, the bum. Markham, look at Mike Daggett. He's staggered. There go his knees. They started to buckle. There he goes. Five. He wasn't seven, even hit, and seven, he's down, Vance. Eight. Nine. Ten. There's the referee picking him up off the floor and carrying him to his corner. But Vance, he wasn't even hit. No, oh, I know he wasn't, Mark. But I got to look at him just before he fell. He may not have been hit. But I guarantee he's dead. This is District Attorney Markham. The heavyweight murder case began when prize fighter Mike Daggett keeled over in the ring. Investigations show that the challenger had been doped and poisoned, and revealed that Billy Stanley, Daggett's girlfriend and nightclub photographer, did not want Mike to win. Nor did K.O. Connolly, the champion, or his manager, Silk Morgan. Vance, Sergeant Heath, and I have found out that Billy Stanley is at her apartment with Sam Billings, Mike's manager. And we are on our way up there. Ah, <laughs> oh, please stop, Billy. That isn't going to help things any. I can't, I can't help it, Sam. I can't stop. Billy. He's gone. He should never have gone into that ring. He's gone, Sam. Yeah, yeah, I he know. He was murdered. The police say he was murdered. He was poisoned. Oh, uh, I'll get it, Billy. Now, try to take it easy. I beg your pardon. I'm District Attorney Markham. This is Philo Vance and Sergeant Heath. We'd like to see Miss Billy Stanley. Uh, come on in. I'm Sam Billings. Uh, I was Mike's manager. That's Miss Stanley, only... She I can know. understand how she feels, Mr. Billings. Good evening, Miss Stanley. <laughs> Permit me to tell you how What sorry do you want I with am. me, Mr. Vance? What do you want? Haven't I had enough questions from the police? Apparently not. You see, Miss Stanley, we found out that Mike Daggett was both doped and poisoned, and that you were with him when he ate last before the fight. Yeah, yes, yes, I was. 
that I didn't want him to fight. Found that out too, I suppose. But did you also find out that I loved him, did you? We'll take your word for that, Miss Stanley. Look, Mr. Markham, Vance ain't getting anywhere with those silk gloves of his. Please, please. I'm taking over. Look here, Miss Stanley. Your boyfriend was fed knockout drops and he was poisoned afterwards. The Mickey Finn was so he wouldn't taste the poison. Now you ate with him. Come on, admit you fed him the stuff. No, no, I won't. I didn't. You've got no right to come here and accuse him. Billings, you. you shut up or I'll go to work on you. Now, come on, Miss Stanley. Tell us you did it, and we'll go easy on you. I won't tell you that. It's not true. Apparently, motorman's gloves aren't any more effective than silk ones. Huh? Never mind, Heath. Mr. Vance was entitled to that. Uh... Miss Stanley, that's a professional camera on the table over there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Speed Graflex. You know I'm a nightclub photographer. Who develops your pictures? I do it myself. There's a dark room in the club. You liked Mike Daggett, didn't you, Miss Stanley? Oh, yes. You were going to marry him? Yes, yes, I was. You loved him more than any man in the world, didn't you? Yes, yes, of course I did. And why did you poison him? I didn't, I didn't! Of course you did. <laughs> Mr. Daggett was murdered by poison, by an acid used in developing pictures. It was handy for you to get, you got it, you used it. No, no, Mr. Vance, I, I, I tell you, I didn't. Mr. Daggett was fed knockout drops. Sergeant Heath found out that you purchased several ingredients at a drugstore. These ingredients, when combined, would do the trick very nicely. You were the last person to eat with Mr. Daggett. Why don't you admit you fed him the drops and the poison? All right. All right, I fed him the knockout drops. I did it because I wanted him to lose the fight so he'd give up the ring. I did that, but I didn't poison him. I didn't, do you hear me? Mr. Vance... You must believe I didn't poison him. I don't think I must, but I think I do believe it. That's why I'm going to ask Sergeant Heath to let you go. Let her go? Vance, are you nuts? She admitted the knockout drops. I'll get her to admit she used the poison on Dagger, too. I'd rather you didn't try, Sergeant Heath. I'd rather you let Miss Stanley free for a while. Now, what's the big idea, Vance? Well, frankly, Heath, there's a chance she didn't poison her sweetheart. But finding out who did might be quite a problem. I have an idea that in some way, Miss Stanley will simplify that problem for us. <laughs> hey, champ, this Vance guy comes to us to tell us Mike's girl admits she gave Mike a Mickey. <laughs> what do we care? <laughs> sure, Silk, what do we care? I wasn't certain whether you cared or not. I thought perhaps you'd like to know. And by the way, you might be interested in this. The police have released Billy Stanley. Hey, Vance, the, uh, the paper said that Mike was poisoned by some junk used in developing pictures. <laughs> Don't you know that Stanley dame takes pictures in nightclubs? Sure, she takes pictures in nightclubs. That's beside the point. What is important to both of you is that you wanted Mike out of the way. Because from what I've learned, he could have beaten you easily last night. <laughs> think so? Yeah, think so? I know so. What I think is that perhaps you wouldn't want him to try. We can't find out how Mike was poisoned. But perhaps you found some way of feeding it to him. You can't come in here and accuse us of murdering Mike. Nah, you can't come in here and say we knocked him off. And I'll teach you not to do things like that, Vance. Hey, go ahead, Jam. Show him. I don't like the way he looks anyhow. His nose is too straight. Yeah, his nose is too straight. Fix that right now with the... <coughs> oh, oh, oh. You've killed him, Vance, with that jiu-jitsu trick of yours. You killed him when you threw him over your shoulder. I think not, Mr. Morgan. Not if he landed on his head. Well, so I own a victory over K.O. Connolly. That practically makes me the heavyweight champion of the world. What? Your picture, sir, you and the lady would make an attractive picture. Have it as a souvenir of your visit to this nightclub. No, thank you. Uh, no? All right. Would you like your picture? Oh, it's you, Mr. Vance. Good evening, Miss Stanley. Oh, Mr. Vance, I, I want to thank you for getting me off. But tell me, are you close to finding out who did kill Mike? I think his killer is in this club, Miss Stanley. You mean K.O. Connolly or his manager, Silk Morgan? They've got a ringside table, and they're looking this way. Good. Listen, lean over and pretend to whisper something to me, anything at all. Go ahead. All right. What is it you want me to say? Anything. 
but be emphatic. Are you anywhere near knowing who killed Mike, Mr. Vance? Really? Well, thank you very much. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Billings. Hi, Vance. Hello, Billings. Hello, what goes sir. on here? Not a great deal. I'll see you later, Miss Stanley. Right. I'll see you later, Sam. Okay. Would you like to go to the... I'm glad you came over, Mr. Billings. If I'm not mistaken, isn't that Mr. Silk Morgan of the Champion making their way over to this table? Yeah, it is. Wonder what they want. I imagine we'll find out soon enough. Hello there, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Connolly. Hi, Vance. Hi, Vance. Hey, Vance, what was it that Billy Stanley was whispering to you just now? <laughs> Unless it ain't none of my business. On the contrary, I'd say it was a great deal of your business. Miss Stanley told me that if I'd meet her at the back exit when the club closes, she'd tell me who poisoned Mike Daggett. My age, a stage door, Johnny. Vance, why do I do things like this? Because you're a good cop, Heath. Because I asked you to, and because Markham told you to. Yeah. Well, I can see the stage door from here. All the musicians are out and most of the dames, but where's that Billy Stanley? I'm sure I don't know. Heath, how far would you say it was from here to the stage door? Well, it's about half a block. Good. That's just right for us not to be seen and yet near enough to help in case of trouble. Hey, Vance, here comes that Stanley girl. And she's walking this way, too. There's no trouble. No, There's no back of her, that dark figure. He's going to grab her. Come on, Heath, we've no time to waste. Come on, Heath, we've got to get there in time. Vance, that guy's got a knife. I can see it. Wait. We can't catch him, but a bullet will. Yeah. Kill me. Yes, I know, Miss Stanley. But Sergeant Heath shoots very well. Yeah, I sure do. Got three marksman's medals. Got this guy right in the right spot, too. You won't try to use a knife on nobody again. That isn't why you shot him. Not the only reason I mean, Sergeant. He's the man who poisoned Mike Daggett. Oh. Now let's have a look at him. Though I know who he is, of course. Sam Billings. What? He killed Mike? Mr. Vance, are you sure? Positive. So you know that, do you, Vance? So what, what good will it do you? I'm through. Oh. I know it. Sure, I killed Mike, but what are you going to do about it now? Nothing. Anything I might have been able to do has already been done by Sergeant Heath's gun, Mr. Billings. Hey, Mr. Vance. Yes, Miss Woods? You figured out that Sam Billings, Mike Daggett's manager, poisoned him with an acid he took from that Miss Stanley's dark room. How? How? Yeah, how? How did you figure it? Well, you... And I'm telling you now, after you do tell me, I also have a why I'm going to ask you. All right, Miss Woods. You're entitled to at least one how and one why. <laughs> I'll tell you how I knew it was Billings. He was the only person, not counting Miss Stanley, who ever got near enough to Mike Daggett to poison him the day of the fight. Oh, check. Well, now comes that why. Why should a guy's own manager knock him off? Well, Billings thought Mike was going to throw the fight either because of the threats of the champion and his manager or because his girlfriend had pleaded with him not to win. Oh. As a consequence, Billings bet heavily on Daggett to lose. He bet against his own fighter? That's right. Then, the afternoon of the fight, Mike told Billings he didn't care what happened. He was going out to win. Yeah. So Billings had to find some way to stop that. And he did. By stealing some acid from Billy Stanley. Hey, but how did he get Mike to take the poison? He wasn't near Daggett when he was eating. That's true. But just before the fight, Billings slipped a rubber mouthpiece into Mike's mouth. Oh. All fighters used them to protect their teeth. And the mouthpiece had been dipped in the acid. Oh, now I get it. And after Mike dropped, Billings removed the mouthpiece. A very natural thing to do. Yeah. Nobody suspected anything because Billings took all of Mike's equipment, which is what any manager would do. What do you know? Only this manager took with him the proof that he was a murderer. Yeah, he took the proof, but he didn't fool you, did he, boss? I merely suspected what he had done. I had to be sure... So I made certain he thought that Billy Stanley promised to name Mike's killer after work. Because if he were the murderer, he couldn't take a chance on letting her do that. No. There was a chance that she had seen him steal the acid and was going to tell me that. <laughs> you see, that brought Billings out into the open and right into the middle of our net. Gee, it sure did. And hey, you know something? What? Bring him into the 